Well, hello again. Welcome to the VK6ES uh, Amateur Radio Channel. Just thought I'd give you another quick look at the Moxon uh, two-meter antenna. I've uh, spoken to a couple of the guys uh, using it already and uh, got some very good reports. In fact, I couldn't believe how good the uh, signal reports were using just uh, using just five watts with this thing on a on a light stand in my lounge room. Um, I was getting uh, very good reports from 20 or 30 kilometers away. Um, so uh, it seems to be quite uh, quite an amazing uh, uh, quite an amazing little antenna, and uh, I'm only disappointed really that I didn't uh, come across the Moxon antenna some time ago. Um, there seems to be a little confusion. Um, some of the guys think that this is part of a dual band antenna, and uh, that's not the case. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what uh, what I intended to do was to have um, this one, the two meter one. So I've got the uh, you can see that there's the boom it's on, and uh, I'll put the termination on there. I'm going to weatherproof that termination by putting some gunk on it uh, before I paint the antenna with the disruptive pattern. And uh, the same, of course, goes for the other side, the reflector side. I'll cut those bolts down to uh, uh, cut those bolts down to the nuts, and um, I'll just put some weatherproofing stuff on that before I paint it. Um, there's a better look at the uh, at the joint. So at the top of the antenna, I'll just show you the bigger picture so you can get some. There we go. So I'll come around and I'll show you that. Now I didn't use the black plastic joints. You can probably see that. I hope. You can see that beige joint in there, that beige retic joint. Um, remember, the driven element uh, is shorter than the uh, reflector, so that's why the, the retic joint is closer to to the driven element. Um, I didn't use the black ones, which would be easier to see because I was going to paint the antenna, or am going to paint the antenna. And there were some people in the shop that were sort of between me and the boxes that contained the black retic joiners. So uh, there was a choice of black or beige, and there was no one by the beige ones, so I picked a handful of beige ones. Um, but uh, anyway, back to what I was saying. Uh, as there seems to be some confusion, stand that up, um, about this being a dual band antenna. No, it isn't. It's a, it's a two meter antenna. And this is going to uh, stick out one side of the, uh, the center mounting. And there will be a smaller one of these, about a third of the size, on the other end of the boom. Uh, might even be on. Uh, uh, I might make the boom a little bit longer, and uh, have them a little bit further apart. But uh, they're individual antennas, so there'll be a 70 centimeter one on this end, uh, two meter one on that end. I might actually swap them around depending on the final fixing arrangement. And uh, all that will happen is the coax. The coax goes from the feed point, like that, from the feed point, along the boom, and it will go to a little uh, a little diplexer. So there's only going to be one feeder going up to this pair of antennas, and uh, I'll probably use this. Um, I do have an MFJ diplexer, but I gave a tweak to because the 70cm uh, notch was uh, on about 350 megs when I put it on the analyzer at work. Um, I've got no idea what this one is like, um, but what I prefer about this one is that it's got the it's got the tails on it. Hang on, I'm just going to get it out of the bag quite easily. Sorry about this. Usual standard of VK6CS video preparation. There we go. Now what I like about this is. It's got these tails on it. Now the MFJ one hasn't. It's just got a couple of sockets, a couple of uh, sockets on the um, on the unit itself. And what I like about these tails is, sun's fairly low to the horizon. Sorry about that. So you get some nasty shadowing. What I like about this thing is these tails is that when it's uh, when it's mounted at the uh, center point between the two antennas, it's very easy to weatherproof. So each, uh, each tail will plug into this, uh, probably with a little barrel, uh, 
because I can't uh, if I can't get any female um, 259 type connectors or as a uh, what do they call those things a line version of the SO239 an inline SO239 um, then uh, I'll just have a barrel going to another PL259 from from each antenna and then I can wrap tape around them so initially I'd wrap uh, amalgamating tape around it and then wrap PVC tape around it just to keep the UV off of the uh, the tape that's keeping the weather out um, and it's much harder to do with the MFJ one with the sockets actually mounted on there to actually wrap it properly is, is not as easy as, as, uh, as wrapping uh, uh, a connection in the tail so I'll take this to work I'll stick it on the analyzer and uh, see if it needs a tweak if it does I'll give it a tweak if not I'll just uh, just install it so just for clarification then a Moxon 2 meter antenna there is purely for 2 meters uh, there'll be one uh, about a third of the size on the other end of this boom for 70 centimeters two completely independent antennas um, fed with one feeder through the uh, uh, through the diplexer so I hope that's uh, that might have cleared up any confusion that uh, might have been going on uh, as a result of the previous video I know uh, confusion is my middle name um, but um, hopefully that's uh, uh, painted a clearer picture of uh, what I've got in mind all right, well, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you next time.